Welcome to the market update for the 14th of August 2014 and a special guest today all the way from New South Wales is Anthony Catalano. Anthony, uh, you've been uh, in the press a lot lately, I mean you're in that field anyway, the CEO of domain.com.au um, and perhaps if you could just give a really quick background to yourself and um, as the CEO of domain.com.au, how's it going? Oh, look, it's been, uh, it's been a very interesting uh, return to Fairfax. My background was that I started as a journalist and, um, and then became the property editor at The Age for about um, 11 years um, and then went into the commercial side of the business and ran The Age and City Morning Herald um, real estate sections until about um, 2004, 2005. Um, left the company in 2008 and started my own business in Melbourne with, uh, in partnership with a bunch of real estate agents, a large group of agents. That would have been fun. It was fantastic. <laughs> well, I, uh, they've been in my, uh, they've, I've been in and around them for a long time, since, um, since about 1994 when I became the property editor at the age. And um, so, you know, fantastic relationships with really, um, you know, with the key decision makers in the Melbourne market. Um, so in 2010, we started a um, magazine business. Um, and we now have 16 magazines and um, about 17 websites and a, um, a national portal called, um, called Review Property. And um, Fairfax came in and bought half the business um, not long after we launched. And, um, and in 2013, last year in November, I, um, I was asked to, if I'd come back to Fairfax as a CEO. So it's been a fantastic um, journey in the real estate market. And you know, it, it's, a, it, it's a category that fascinates everyone. You know, so I'm very lucky to be in the role that I'm in. Oh, that's cool. Now, Anthony, the results just came out today. Um, how, did you, how, you, how are you tracking as an organisation? Um, look, Fairfax has done a great job. We've, um, we've had um, the, uh, first, uh, for the first time in, um, in several years uh, growth year on year, and it's part of the, um, the reorganisation of uh, Fairfax. And um, we know we've now returned to stable earnings. Um, there's been a massive transformation of the, uh, the business from a traditional print business to um, a digital first approach. Um, the domain business itself has recorded incredible, um, incredible uh, growth, up 40.5% in revenue, and I'm pleased to say... In how long, 10 years, or...? <laughs> <laughs> no, just in the past 12 months. The past 12 months? We've had 40% growth, and, and the really satisfying part about that is that I think we're agent-friendly, and we've demonstrated we don't need to do that through price gouging, where you know, vendors and, and agents are being, you know, are being um, subjected to 30 40 50% price increases um, year on year. We're doing it out of, um, you know, out of volume. Uh, volume growth. We're doing okay. that through acquisition of other businesses. Um, we bought the Price Finder business last year. We recently announced the um, the acquisition of all homes in Canberra, subject to ACCC approval. But we can do, you know, we can create a great business that reinvests in the other Fairfax assets without go, coming back and charging um, thousands of dollars for a, a single listing on, online. So, just want to pick your brains a little bit on the on the market, Adelaide market, and the Adelaide market, um, and really to get a external point of view um, and an informed one. But just a couple of things, how do you think the Adelaide market's tracking generally from a national point of view? Look, from a national point of view, it's done very well. I mean, it was certainly subdued buyer activity um, in recent years, but that picked up last year. And the 2013-14 the financial year saw growth in Adelaide of 5.9%. Uh, which was terrific compared to you know, previous, uh, previous performance. What was really pleasing was to see the first three quarters of consecutive growth up into the June quarter. Um, that hasn't happened for four years in Adelaide. Um, we got to a situation in Adelaide where um, the median price is now, um, is now ahead of the previous peak, which was in the 2009, 2010 year. So the, you know, at that point, the market, you know, that market uh, in that year increased by about 10.9%, but really pleasing for Adelaide uh, householders to see the median price now above that level. So I think overall, great market. Certainly a lot of strength in the top end um, of the market. There's no doubt about that. Um, and, you know, and low interest rates here have really, uh, have really demonstrated that Adelaide is probably the most affordable real estate in the, in, in the country. Certainly mainland, yeah. yeah. Now, Anthony, um, domain has not traditionally related to, you know, or seen as related to uh, Adelaide or South Australian's property market. Um, one of the reasons we're talking to you here today because you've come over, um, you've been over a few times to South Australia. Is there some, you know, move or people that are looking to sell their properties haven't really considered domain a serious option? Realestate.com have, you know, dominated, to be honest. Um, how, how do you I see think, that? I think we dominate with domain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably saying this to the wrong guy, but I'm just interested in your take on it. You're seen as a Sydney-based uh, portal. 
Look, I think the, um, there's no doubt that the marketing, um, uh, the, the marketing of Domain historically has been Sydney Melbourne centric. Um, that doesn't mean to say that the, you know, we don't have a brand that extends right across the country. Um, since taking over the role in November, one of the things that we did was to, um, uh, to get board support for an accelerator program. We, um, we've hired 92 new people since uh, the beginning of this year. Um, we've, uh, we've got a marketing team now of 19 people and we're, ex you know, we're expanding aggressively uh, throughout the country. We've put on an extra thousand agents or subscribers in the past year, in the past year alone. Um, we've got 18% more paying customers across the country than we, are, than we had this time last year. In terms, of, um, in terms of market share, look, we've obviously, you know, we absolutely dominate the inner city, uh, city market. We're a very, a very competitive um, portal in, uh, in Melbourne. The, um, the, uh, nationally, we've got about 60% audience market share. So the, you know, that's a pretty impressive number. Um, we've also got a significant audience that only uses domain. Now, nationally, that number is 29% of the audience only uses domain. From a point of view of looking at you know, attracting interstate buyers, and you know there is a lot of movement um, in, in Australia because of job opportunities, um, you know in different you know, different parts of the country, you know, a Melbourne Sydney a Melbourne or Sydney buyer for an Adelaide vendor is a really important part of the mix, and in those in those cities, um, domain certainly provides value to you. But in the in the Adelaide market itself, we're investing very heavily over the next 12 months um, to to grow brand awareness. Um, if you look at our apps, for example, um, we've, um, our, the, the, the domain apps are the most highly rated in the country uh, compared to any other brand. You know, they yeah, are, okay. and I won't mention the Apparently brand. The Tim Toops. <laughs> <laughs> we won't, won't, won't talk about that one. Look, the, the, the world's changing and 54% of all inquiry is, uh, for us is now coming off our, uh, off our mobile apps and we've got 2.8 million of them. So that's a really important uh, dynamic to understand in the, in the market. And um, you know, compared to competitors in the marketplace, we're, level, you know, we're pretty close in terms of, the, uh, in terms of um, you know, how people are using modern technology. And, um, you know, and as I said, when, you, you know, when you're rated the most high, you know, the, the, we've got the highest consumer ratings in the country for our apps. So our products are good. Uh, it's now time to sell, you know, to sell the message. We've now got virtually, you know, virtually all um, Adelaide, uh, or the South Australian based agents on our site. So, so would your content for, if you're a buyer, in Adelaide, um, would you pretty much be able to see most of the property on absolutely. domain, or yeah, absolutely? We've, uh, we're um, we're we're very close to achieving 100% relative market okay. share. So we're, we're only we're, we're literally we're less than le less than 50, 60 agents uh, across South Australia um, in terms of you know, achieving saturation of all agents. So and on the seller side, like if you were selling a property, could you risk not being on like realestate.com or domain or if you know, if you can Look, distance yourself from your position, I think it's such an important transaction that you've got to make the right choice for you know, um, for, you know, for your um, for your vendor. Uh, as a seller, I think there is an opportunity for um, um, for both um, you know for both portals to exist quite quite comfortably at the moment. Um, you know, for example, if I was you know if I was selling. Um, um, in any product, a car. I can't put all of my advertising on Channel Nine or Channel Seven because they have exclusive audiences that don't that don't flick. That's the case with us. I think um, in the case of Domain, it's a great product. It's got great consumer ratings. Um, it works and it's really effective in terms of price. So why would you know? Why wouldn't you? So what is is there much of a price difference now that oh, substantial Realestate.com have changed their pricing? Is there much of a difference? I think va value for money. Domain is a much better proposition than Realestate.com. Um, the, um, in terms of the premier products, I think our, you know, our top end products are one better quality products, um, and you know it, often a, a tenth of the price. So um, a tenth. Mm. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Now you're in Adelaide for what reason? We, yeah, as I said earlier, we're, um, we are aggressively looking. We're looking to aggressively grow our market in um, in, in Adelaide. We've got uh, lots of agents interested in the um, in, in the market. There's certainly been lots of concern from the industry about competitive behaviour. Uh, I think that's a great opportunity for a domain to demonstrate it's a great p a product, it's a great industry partner. Um, my, um, you know, my own DNA is to do work with estate agents. I've done it for, I've done it for a long time. I'm in partnership with, uh, with agents in the Melbourne market. I get them, I like them, um, you know, I like the industry. Uh, I think we're, um, you know, I'd like to think we're the good guys in, in, in this industry that can really help the real estate market in Adelaide prosper and, and have a sustainable long-term future. I, you know, I, I honestly believe that some of the um, competitive behaviours threaten the real estate industry and I think that um, agents need to think very carefully about how they, um, the, the kind of information that they hand over for free 
um, to media business that basically disintermediate dis their function. I, as a consumer, I need a real estate agent to tell me what my house is worth, how I should sell it, uh, what are the best methods, what can I get for my property, how do I market it best. Um, the, the risk for agents in, the, in, uh, in what they're being asked to do by, by some of the competitors is that you lose that knowledge base. The re, you know, if, I, if I describe you as anything, you're the Colonel Sanders of real estate. You, are, you hold the herb, secret herbs and spices of how to sell property. And I think the, um, the industry is naive if it hands over that information uh, and doesn't, play, and, and doesn't have, have a hand in, um, in, in how that's managed in the future. So do you think there's a... a, a you've mentioned in the paper, uh, and it created a euphoria of you know, sort of <laughs> reaction basically. Yeah. Do you genuinely think that uh, the agenda of real estate.com in this case is what we're really talking about, your major competitor, is to change the rules in the real estate business or do you think that's just a beat up? Uh, look, I can tell you um, that their previous CEO made it very clear in, um, in presentations in the UK and others that they wanted to disintermediate the agent. They wanted to take the agent out of the function as an intermediary in a, in a deal between the buyer, the seller and the buyer. He made that very clear. So ha how would it work then? Let's say they achieve the objective. How does it look in five years' time? I think, that, uh, I think if agents aren't careful, they will become nothing more than brokers in a transaction. At the moment, the real estate industry manage the marketing process. Um, they, um, through the marketing process, they, pre uh, they, pre they, they present their own brands. Primarily, you're in the listing game first and foremost, not the selling game. You've got nothing to sell if you haven't listed it first. Um, so the, your brands are really important. Um, I think that there's a, there's a potential for you to become um, almost car sales like where if you're a dealer selling a car, your brand can't exist. So the way that car sales currently works is that you, you, you pay for an ad, um, if you then get, as a dealer, if you then get inquiry, having paid to, having paid to successfully get an audience, car sales, car sales then ask, oh, you want to know the name of that person? Oh, that's going to cost you $42. And so you have to pay for that lead. So your brands are at risk. So um, there's a model out there that they're, they're copying? Absolutely. Well, look, you know, Greg Ellis made it very clear that, uh, that initially the business, you know, and, and I've shown Adelaide agents this video of him saying, you know, it was a consumer, so it was an agent, seller, um, and then viewer focus, and it's now become the consumer, the seller, and the agent last. And his words were last. Um, they're not. You know, they're not after the. Uh, the uh, they're, they're really after the industry. And if you think about, think about this. They're a business generating about four hundred million dollars of revenue. The industry. Uh, the industry generates about three point two billion dollars of commission. If it can take a slice of that commission by selling you leads, twenty percent. That's six hundred million dollars. Um, so that's a, significant, uh, that, that's a significant reason to become a state agent. And I say, and I'll, I'll say this too, I, <laughs> I think REA stands for what they want to be, real estate agent. What, what do you think of the, of the um, school of thinking out there that essentially realestate.com will become the master franchise for real estate agents? So realestate.com actually becomes the brand of which then they have licensed agents taking the risk and doing the work. Do you, do you think that's I, part of the plan? I th look, I think the, um, there's, there's some merit in that thinking. I, I've spoken to agents uh, about, about this issue. I think if you sell your agent profile, if you put your agent profile on, um, on REA, for argument's sake, um, and they, they get to view, uh, they get to tell you who's viewing your profile. Ultimately, they can sell you a lead. Now, I know of many estate agents that will that'll quite happily pay 20% for a, for 20 a lead. 20% 20 20 is being paid now. Yeah, it's being paid now. It's great. And, and it's been paid for a long time in the industry. So the REA sees itself as an... You know, I believe REA sees, it, sees itself as being able to take that 20%. To me, the, the, the risk for real estate brands is that they lose, their, they lose their brand value. And estate agents under this model, the individuals become their own individual brand. So and they're basically salary type, you know, cool. the, 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 yeah. the whole um, fabric of the current system basically is in the process of being That's right. broken down. I think, I, I think people need to understand that industries change, you know, technology changes industries you know, and changes them forever. There are, you know, there are, you don't, when you ring a contact centre you get an automated uh, voice. So there, are more, there are more words written in this, um, in this day and age than there ever have been, but there's less journalists employed than ever before. Um, you know, I was an ex-journal. You know, there, are, there are literally you know, thousands of unemployed journalists around the world now because of the way technology has changed and the fact that anyone can be one. And, and so I think, 
think estate agents are naive to think that you know, this kind of technology that brings buyers and sellers together means that their function is going to remain the same. It has to change, and agents need to be part of the change. So, so but if you're a consumer and, and you're not a, not a self-centred um, you know, media you know, you're accusing person, me of being self-centred. Or self-centred, <laughs> self-centred real estate agent. I'll put it, we're both in the same bag here. And if you were just uh, the kind of, you know, I don't know, the, the mother of the universe, is this a good thing for the consumer that basically the industry is in the process of dismantling itself? Oh, look, I don't, I don't know that it's necessarily a good thing for the... I, I don't think when you have a competitor putting price increases you know, up to $8,050 for, you know, for a listing as exists in the Melbourne market, that that can be a good thing for the consumer. The best thing that, you know, that the agent could do for the consumer is to resist that kind of price, price point. One of the ways that you do that is to increase competition, and I hope the domain is part of that, you know, what we offer to you as, as an opportunity for you to bring competition to the marketplace. Um, you know, how, do the, how do the changes in, in technology... Um, um, uh, are they good for the vendor or the, or the, or the seller, or the, the seller or the buyer? To some extent, yes. I think you know, the, we, we, you know, as consumers, we can go into the process now much more informed about what my house is worth. How should I sell Definitely. it? The knowledge base. I think the I think a young you know a young person entering the market for the first time is much more informed than I would have been at the same age, you know, 20 years ago. Um, where you know we've got a much greater knowledge base than than, than uh, they had before. So that's a good thing for consumers, and technology has played a part in doing that. Um, the media has played a, played a part in doing that. Um, so, to that end, they are. Is the consumer better off without the agent in the process? I'm not sure that that's right. I think that there is a, um, you know, the agents would, you know, wouldn't have survived in this industry as long as they have if they hadn't played a, you know, a pivotal role and a critical role in, in, in transactions. And I think that that's something that, you know, we might like to, you know, we might like to joke about estate agents in the, you know, in the, when we're dealing with this. But the reality is we, we turn to them time yeah. and time again. Yeah. And they become, Trusted, a trusted part of the transaction. I think that the risk, you know, the risk for agents is that you could lose that that role, and become nothing more than brokers, um, in, you know, in bringing you know, buyers and sellers who have found each other, um, and then having to come in the, come into that that negotiation and deal on their behalf. But your ability to you know get the property marketed for someone, do all the work, will be it will be lost if you don't take control of it. It, it seems to me the consumer, the the, the size of the pie is not about reducing the pie with this technology. It's a matter of, you mentioned the word gouging, well, whether it's gouging or not, but the reality is that the, the mechanical bit, which is the cost effective bit, it seems to me like there'll be the similar amount of money that's spent by the consumer, but less of it will go into the service part. Less will go into the, it, it, the, the it, human hold, element hold, hold and more hand, will go into the big bit. corporate. Um, look, I'm not sure about that. I think the, the, risk, the risk is that if advertising gets so expensive that it'll eat a new commission. I agree with that. And if it eats a new commission, then the consumer will get less service. The or poor quality service. Poor yeah. quality, well, poor quality service, that's right. The, 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 what the industry has done wrong, and, you know, and, I, and I think to, to historically we've been guilty of not, um, as I say, we, you know, Domain has been guilty of not um, performing it to, it, you know, to its optimum to give you an alternate choice. We've changed, uh, you know, our attitude to that has changed. The company's invested heavily. Um, I think prices will, will correct themselves if we emerge out of this as a strong competitive alternative. No question, if we get competition, it'll keep the, the value there. And the industry needs to embrace competition because one of the things that happens is you say, well, I'm the client and I've got another choice. Mm. And, I, and I think if you do that, then you'll protect the vendor, you'll protect yourself. Um, you know, from our point of view, we don't need to. The domain doesn't need to um, put in 100% price increases to um, uh, to achieve its commercial objectives. It's you know, it wants to be here for a long time as a good commercial partner of the uh, the uh, the industry. I think we can do that by by working with the industry. As I said, we've got 60% um, share of voice. We can. We'd like to get to 100% share of voice. We've got a couple of thousand agents still to go in terms of acquisition around the country. Um, you know, we've got lots of great channels to grow our business, uh, but we want to be great industry partners and I hope that um, the industry recognises that in, if it helps us become that, um, then it will also achieve a, a better outcome for itself. Well, Anthony, thanks for your time. It's been great. And you. one final question, uh, what can we sell you in Adelaide? <laughs> <laughs> I like beachfront. <laughs> okay, we'll look forward. All right, thank, thank you very much, Anthony. Great. Very much thank appreciate your time. Much. Cheers. Well, that wraps up our market update for the 14th of August, 2014 and we'll see you next week.